Good afternoon, or whenever you're watching this. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Well, good afternoon, or whenever you're watching this. Today, we're going to spend a little bit of time in the Word of God. Now, I want you to think about light. It might be that as you're looking at these videos, the, 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 the picture is a little grainy. The reason for that is there's not enough ambient light. Ambient light is the natural lighting that occurs just in nature. And cameras, many at least, need a lot of ambient light for it to be clear. Now, I've got all the lights on here and have as much ambient light as we can. But ambient light is important if we want to see things clearly. So today what we want to do is we want to spend a little time in the ambient light of God's Word. And we're going to do that by studying the Bible together. Now the, what we're, the way we're going to study is that you can divide it into whatever segment you want, but we're going to spend seven or eight minutes together in the Word of God, and I hope that it encourages you. I'm going to walk over here to my desk. Get, turn your Bibles to Matt. Get your Bibles. Turn them to Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse 24 through 34. It's a pretty long passage in the time we have, but we're going to give it a shot. Now, I'm going to take off my sweater. <clears throat> Thank you to the one who loaned this to me. I think it looks pretty nice. Now, have you got your Bibles? <coughs> This is a method of study that I learned back when I was in college. And when you have a moment to be alone, you can take 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. It involves praying, reading and looking at the word, and then praying again, looking for an application. So more specifically, what we want to do is in a minute, we're going to pray and ask the Lord to open our eyes. Then we're going to look at this passage. And I have a sheet, as you can see here. because I'm, I've already written on it some in the first take of this. But anyway, it's the passage. Now, we're going to pray, and then we're going to observe, interpret, and apply, pick out the main thing, and then we're going to thank the Lord. So when we first want to pray, what we want to do is we want to ask the Lord to open our eyes. We do that by beginning to be still, to think about the Lord, to fix our eyes on Jesus, look into his wonderful face. So that the things of earth might grow strangely dim in these few moments in light of his glory and grace. Let's pray. Pray, don't, don't listen to my prayer, but join in in this prayer because you can pray it yourself. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness towards us. I say that a lot, but it never gets old. Thank you for your grace and mercy that, that we have been made worthy because of your son. That you have granted us your word and the, the, the power and the understanding that comes from studying your word. So open our eyes, Lord. Open our ears that we might learn more about you and about us. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. So that's what we're looking for. What is it saying about God? What is it saying about me? Is it asking me to do anything? What's the main theme? And then how can I apply it? to my life with God's help. So we have prayed and now we're looking at the word. Observation, what do you notice? Phrases, words, repetition, um, 
uh, interpret what is it, what might it mean, and then what is our application. Now, if you have one of those Bibles that has headings, you got the main idea right there. But let's just look at this for a couple of minutes. No one can serve two masters. Well, that's an observation. I need to think about that. I wonder if I'm serving two masters. What are the consequences of that? Well, he'll either, he'll either he'll like one more than the other if you look at what the passage says. He'll be more devoted to one. You can't serve equally. So I'm thinking you can't serve God in money. Money might be money or it might be some other thing that's competing, you know, competing. Now, I happen to remember, you might remember certain things you can apply to the verse, but I happen to remember that John Calvin said that our the human heart is like an idol factory. There's things in our hearts that compete for our affections that rightfully are owed to God because that's why we are, how we were created. Okay, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious. That's what we eat. Life is more than that. I'm just skimming the verse. If I had more time, we could look at it more specifically. Whoa, verse 31, there it is again. Therefore, do not be anxious. What shall we eat? Well, do not be anxious about our lives. Don't be anxious about what we eat. I wonder if those are competing for the affections of, of the Lord in my life. And there it is again in verse 34. Therefore, don't be anxious about tomorrow. So three times in this passage, what I've observed is don't be anxious, don't be anxious, don't be anxious. And the first verse says you cannot serve God in money. I wonder if there's things maybe from looking at this passage, it's like a mirror that I'm interacting with. I wonder if there's things in my life that are making me anxious that shouldn't be making me anxious because I'm giving them more affection than they deserve. It's like here, maybe here's God, you know, the centerpiece, and but these are kind of, I don't know, I'm going to have to think about that a little more. Now, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? It looked to me like verses 26, 27, 28, and 29 are examples when you sit out on your back porch or when you take a walk somewhere in the village. Look how the birds play. You know, look at Look how there's food. Oh, you know, they don't have to, they don't fret about, oh, where am I going to get some food? I got to store it up in the barns. The Lord takes care of them. They're his creation, but we're created in his image. I remember that from reading in Genesis. Are you not more valuable than they? Well, I guess we are because we're created in his image. That makes me feel good. And yet, why are you anxious? Or the lilies of the field, they grow. You know, they don't they don't have to put much effort, it just happens, you know. Um, an orange tree doesn't groan to grow oranges, it just grows them. I guess the point is, you know, I wonder if it by example, if God can do that, he'll take care of me. So it seems to me that the Lord will take care of us. So what should we do? Rushing about and worrying so? Or is there something else? In verse 33 would be an application. It's a commands form good applications. It says, you know, everybody runs about after all these things, worrying about the virus, you know, whatever it is we're worrying about. But it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. I think I remember a translation that said, and he will give all these things to you if, he give, if you give him first place in your life and live as he wants you to. So I look at this passage and I think, what if I'm serving two masters? I don't need to be anxious, but I need to serve God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's a cure. Because it puts us in the frame of mind that the Lord's going to take care of us. Then let's end with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, that your word speaks. Sometimes in wonderful ways and sometimes in still small ways. 
Thank you for giving us your written word that we can be conformed in your image and be confirmed by the work of your son, Jesus Christ. May we be less anxious. May we seek you first. May, I, may, may you work that out in my life. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. I hope this ambient light of the word of God was helpful. And I'm looking forward to you seeing us <laughs> this Sunday. Thank you. It's been a blessing to be, to be with you. Take care.